we're getting this on film, so they'll know we thought of this in advance. Uh -huh. There are no secrets to hide in the Green Party. Um, what I thought is this. When you exit the stage, see if you can go out into the audience and stage dive. Uh -huh. um, you're younger than I am, probably in better shape, and I do it all the time. I've never gotten hurt. Um, but here's the thing. Should I throw myself the, the out? Picture, we can get, well, I don't know if you can throw yourself out. You might have to go down into the, off the stage and we'll from the side over there. You get from the side fills. Okay. The, uh, um, if we can get a picture of you, crowd surfing, that would be fantastic. I, because, I can't throw myself out. If you throw yourself out, I don't think you can make it over. That's a long distance. I don't think I can make it. Oh, it is? Yeah, okay. it's like 10 feet. Yeah, I don't think they do it okay. that far. You had some. But there are, there are sides to the side of us. And we get a picture of that, okay. and we always say uh, support. Perfect. Thank you for supporting our show. zero eviction policy and the crowd went wild and clapped for it. Uh, so you got to be hopeful. The idea of zero eviction, well there's nowhere to, uh, for, for um, basically um, compromise with the banks and stuff. But no, there is. This makes, there's no room for compromise if you're just going to let people be evicted. There's none whatsoever. When there's a zero eviction, now the banks have to work with the people. You know I'm saying? When you can just chuck people out of their homes, I mean I cannot believe that in, you know, the United States, after we spent decades and decades working for workers' rights, century, really, you know, just, I mean, fighting for things like the weekend, you know, you can actually take families, kids, and chuck them out on the street. That's absolutely horrible. It's 2011. It's, you know, it's Dickensian to take families and chuck them out on the street. This isn't London in 1811. This is Philadelphia 2011. You know, we put a man on the moon. Okay, keeping a few people in their homes should not be that difficult. And we were hopeful enough to look, you know, 250,000 miles away at, at a nice bright orb in the sky and go, yeah, I think we can put some dudes up there. What, two will go, two, yeah, we'll put two up there for a start. Then yeah, we'll maybe throw some more up there. Keeping people in their homes should not be that difficult. Okay, I don't, I'm, you know, not an expert in real estate, but I don't think there's a command module involved. People have a right to be in their homes. You know, people have, when the, the contract that you make to put a roof over somebody's head is a solemn contract, all right? And that contract should also say, I will do everything I can to keep you in here because I know you're doing everything you can to pay the rent. Again, I see what these people have, you know, work-wise, okay? They're not, you know, they're not vacationing in the Riviera and then coming home and saying, I can't pay the rent. These are people that work every day. Sherry said it since 2011. There should be a better way. I, I cannot believe that we cannot find some sort of compromise. And I said that is 
to me, you know, a great cornerstone in, in her in her campaign. If that was the only thing, I would just I would vote for her on that alone. If the rest of her campaign, like I said, were all right, we all have to wear clown suits and tinfoil hats, I'd still vote for her just to get that zero eviction. I think that's wonderful. And I think it's it's a shame that nobody else has come forward with it before. I think until, you know, the economy gets back on its feet, I think that is a wonderful thing to do. Uh, Sherry was uh, leading marches out in Harrisburg, that's how I first became aware of her. Uh, then I found out her story about how she had been homeless, which is, you know, and, and sleeping in abandoned buildings. So here's somebody that knows, and to go from that to a candidate for, for office is incredible. And you can hear fire, huge fireworks going off in the background. So I guess it's true. That's the, the, anger, the anger of the uh, Wall Street. Yeah, anger. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's Wall Street attempting to blow us out of here. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what I think is the best part about the Sherry Honkel campaign. Whenever I turn on, uh, ever I turn on TV, but I see him too often. There's a guy I call Joe R. Piehole. All right, he's a sheriff in Arizona, uh, and um, he has some ideas that are straight out of the Middle Ages. I mean, it's very frightening. And he actually, oddly enough, for, despite being the really tough sheriff, really tough on crime, uh, crime is highest in his area. So obviously, I don't think his tactics are really turning out the way he wants. But he shouldn't be America's sheriff. Okay, America isn't married to its sister and doesn't have an outhouse. All right, Sherry should be America's sheriff. Sherry Honkel should be known as America's sheriff because she has the right ideas. She has the ideas that made America work, all right? You know, not the idea of, you know, random stop and, you know, all right, you, you're in jail where you gotta wear the pink underwear. He has a lot of weird ideas, you know, pie hole does. But, you know, Sherry, when Sherry sits down and talks to you, it makes sense. And even, I, I'm, even I'm sure the people who don't agree with her 100% can at least see their sincerity there. And that's a great place to start, you know. Sincerity is a great place. That should be everybody's starting block. You know, are you in it for yourself or are you in it for the people? You talk to her for 10 minutes, you know she's in it for the people. In fact, you talk to her for 10 seconds, you know she's in it for the people. Hey, I'm Rodney Anonymous, and uh, I am a supporter of Sherry Honkala for sheriff. And I just wanted to say that I think she will be the best sheriff we've ever had in Philadelphia. Uh, what I need all of you to do is, there's a couple things, right? One, if you got money, and I know everybody's broke, I'm broke, turn my pockets inside out, you won't see any change fall out. Uh, but if you do have some cash, please donate it to Sherry's campaign. Hey, if you don't have any cash and you have some free time, and once again, I know that's uh, not a thing a lot of people have these days, if you have some free time, swing on by and volunteer, all right? You'll get it back and feeling good about yourself. And, um, you know, when she wins and she becomes a, a thorn in the side of the powers that be, you'll feel good about that, too, because you took part in that. If you don't have any money and you don't have any cash, and I mean, I'm sorry, if you don't have any cash and you don't have any free time, all right, and we all find ourselves in, in both those areas, she, her, her office is at 718 Market Street, okay? Swing on by, say hello, tell her you support her, because sometimes just telling somebody you support them can be as good as cash, you know, or as good as, as volunteering. And if you have an idea, you know, and, and I know you people are short on cash, I know you're short on free time, but I know you're not short on ideas. You have plenty and plenty of good ideas. Come on down, share your good ideas with Sherry. She's dying to hear them, I'm dying to hear them. Thank you very much.